welcome everyone to our Monday night shiur. Our shiur is uh, sponsored Leilu Nishmat, a person who was a big Baal Chesed, who was tragically taken from Am Yisrael. Ezra Cohen Kola Ben Rachel, Ruach Hashem Tenichenu Began Eden, Amen. Sponsored by the uh, Aminov and Palvano families. May Hashem bless them with Bracha, Vatzlacha, Parnasa Tova, Yushol Gedolot, Bechol Medel Metav, Banim Tzadikim, Banot Tzadikim, Amen. Amen. So, um, when we start the shiur, I have something interesting prepared for you guys today. But before I do, I have to talk a little bit about current events. We didn't speak about it on Shabbat because on Shabbat you're not allowed to talk about these things. Shabbat is me'ain olam haba. Three things the Gemara and Brachot Daf Samech says is me'ain olam haba. Number one is Shabbat. Shabbat is the 60th of olam haba. Number two is a nice sunny day. A sunny day. When you go out, you see the sun, you wake up in the morning, it's nice and sunny outside. It's me'ain olam haba. And the third thing is when a person is able to release, to go in the bathroom. That's also that pleasure that he feels is me'ain olam haba. The Gemara asks, it should be Tashmish Hamita. It should be when a person indulges himself in the other gender. That should be Me'in Olam Haba. The Gemara says, no, not only is that not Me'in Olam Haba, that's Me'in Gehenom. Whoa. Why? Because not only do you release and it lasts for a second, but you're also causing yourself bodily harm. The Rambam says the reason why people used to live so long back in the day, in the time of Adam Arisho and times like that, is because they were very much in self control. They were in self-control with themselves. And the Rambam says, person who does that avera, how many bad things he does for himself, cause himself to lose his hair. And don't go around looking at people who don't have hair and say, you know, start diagnosing people. That could also be hereditary. I'm just saying, the Gemara said, the Gemara says, the Rambam says that part of the person to lose his hair, to have bad breath, to have bodily odor. All these things are caused when you, why? Why does it cause that, that avera? Because you're releasing your bodily energy. Your body needs energy. When a person is young, he thinks he could just waste and enjoy himself. But he doesn't know that in the future, he destroys himself. But that's not what I want to talk about right now. I just wanted to bring this down because Shabbat is main olam haba. In olam haba, there is no president, there is no politics. And the world is filled with knowledge. Just like the waters fill the ocean. That's how much knowledge has to fill Shabbat. Like it fills olam haba. But... Everyone was waiting to see what was going to happen, and all the networks called it for the uh, Democratic Party, which is symbolized by the chamor, by the donkey. That's their that's their animal, the chamor. It says by Abraham in this week's parasha. What does it say? By Chavosh Abraham et chamoro. He took his chamor with him. So we see that's what happened. The chamor has the thing. And don't forget also the chamor, which is the donkey. We also have a donkey, the Gdusha. What's the donkey, the Gdusha? Yisachar chamor garem. Your ovets ben It says by the Jewish people when they reached a place, uh, before they reached Har Sinai, they reached a place called Rifidim. In Rifidim, it says there was no water to drink. The Jews, all the water they took with them from Mitzrayim, it all got used up. And it says Amalek came. And attack the Jews. So Rashi says, what is the connection between Rifidim and Amalek? Famous Rashi. What does Rashi say? Rafu yedehem in Torah. They didn't, what Torah did they have already? Those two mitzvot that they had, Brit Milah and Korban Pesach, you know how many halachot there is to learn about that? Even those two mitzvot, the knowing of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Rafu yedehem in Torah. They didn't want to accept the Torah. Why? Loya Mayim. What's Mayim? And Mayim Ela Torah. When we don't have Torah, which is Yisachar, Yisachar Chamor Garem, what do we get? We get Chamor de Klippa. That's Chamor de Klippa. It proves nine, month, nine months, nine months, uh, late stage abortions, which is pure death. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, are these people going to get inside the office? They're going to have the trifecta. What's the trifecta? They're going to have three big Averot. What's the three biggest Averot? Gilui Arayot, Avodah Zarah, Shvichut Amim. Edom, America is Edom. It's the progeny of Rome. Edom, they're all of the Avodah Zarah in some sense. Why? They all believe in Yoshka. Yoshka, he's, he made himself into an Eloka. He made himself into a God. That's Avodah Zarah. Okay, but that's only one Avera. Second Avera that they have is what? Gilui Arayot. What's the worst Gilui Arayot? The worst Gilui Arayot is when your person is with the same gender. That's the worst one. We already had that allowed in America when? Four years ago. Obama, President Obama, Barack Obama, he allowed... The marriage between Barack Hussein Obama. I'm sorry, I didn't mean not to say that. 
I don't want to skip the middle name. He, he, he allowed the men with men marriage. He allowed two men to get married, two women to get married. Legally. That's the problem. Legally. It was, he made it legal. That's two out of three. Now, if this guy gets into office, he promises to allow nine-month-old nine month abortions. I mean, a woman is pregnant nine months. If she wants to, she could go into the doctor's office and she could get an abortion. Now, I don't know if you guys ever saw any videos how abortions take place. No. The baby is alive. The heart is beating. Everything is over there. The doctor goes inside with these medical tools and they suck out piece by piece parts of the body. The leg, the hand. The baby's still alive. It's still alive. They chop it inside and they suck the pieces out. There's no worse kind of death than that. Now, what's the difference? Am Yisrael, some Averot that we do, we're not Chayav Mita right away, Fas Shalom. We're not liable. If a person's Chmechalel Shabbat, he's not Chayav to the death penalty right away. He has to be warned. He has to uh, go to the Beit Din. There is a court case then. The Gemara says some court cases can take, oh, oh can, yes. never, can never be solved. Why? The Gemara says, if uh, the Gemara Mako, the end of par, uh, the second pair, if a Beit Din kills, if, if it kills once in seven years, they have a capital case of a death penalty. Nobody visited that court anymore. If they couldn't find a kaf zuchut for the person to keep him alive, they're nobody, they're out of business. That's why the Gemara says, the Tana de Be'eliyahu says, we're going to read Tana de Be'eliyahu today, when Moshe Rabbeinu comes down from Har Sinai, remember when he comes down after the Egel Azav, he says, Mila Hashem Elai. Right? The famous saying. Also the Maccabim said, the Chanukah is coming out. He said, he said Mi kamocha be'elim Hashem. They copied Moshe Rabbeinu's uh, yeah. word line. So when he said that, Ve'asfu elav, who came to him? Kol b'nei Levi. All the Levi, Levi came to him. So the, then what does Moshe Rabbeinu say famously? He said, he said to b'nei Levi, Hashem told me to tell you, everyone put your sabla, as they say in Russian, the sword, kill your brothers. Which brothers? The one that you saw. Last night, did the Egel Azahav kill them? I give you, Hashem told me to tell you. So the Tanah Dabe Eliyahu says, when did Hashem tell him to do that? Oh. Hashem did not tell him to do that. Hashem said, I'm going to destroy Am Yisrael. Moshe said, wait, let me do something. He goes down and he comes up with this line. Hashem told me to tell you guys to kill. No, that's not what happened. Hashem didn't tell them. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu say Moshe Rabbeinu said it to himself, I know that if I would tell them on my own mind, to kill the ones who did the Egel Azahav, they would not believe me as a rabbi anymore. I would never be their rabbi anymore. Why? A baiting that kills, they can't find Kav Zichud, he's out of business. So he says, I can't be out of business, I just started my career. I, I just took them out of Egypt. If I tell them from my own hand, he was right, halakhically speaking. He was right. Because what's the greatest witness in the world? Was Moshe Rabbeinu there when he saw him do the Egel Azahav? So halakhically speaking, could he kill them? He cannot kill them. You need two witnesses. And he didn't have any witnesses. Why? Because Aharon himself, Aharon him, but you have to warn them. We don't see in the Torah that they came and they said stop. Just the opposite. All the Jews were liable for the Egel Azav because what? They didn't warn and they didn't say anything. They just separated themselves except for 3,000 Jews. And they were Rav. So what happens? Moshe Rabbeinu, how is he able to kill them? Halakhically speaking. So he said, Hashem told me to tell you. Once they heard that Hashem said, right away they got the wind. To do it. So, Chas Shalom, we learn from this Gemara, from this Tanah Dabeliyah, that you're not allowed to kill. But if a per in the Jewish law, killing is a very bad thing. Why? When a person kills somebody, you can never bring him back. If you embarrass somebody or do something like that, you could always say forgiveness. You could always ask for forgiveness. A person who knows to forgive or to say sorry is called a Baal Nefesh. What's a Baal Nefesh? A person with a big soul. Why? One of the hardest things is to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes you're right, but you still have to say I'm sorry. Even if you're right, sometimes you have to say I'm sorry. Why? The saying goes, Alti chacham. Don't be smart. Uh, sorry, Alti tzodek. Don't be right. Tiye chacham. Be smart. That's, a good, that's the regular people say that. We learn from the Gemara that you're allowed to use the sayings of regular people. Even if the chachamim did. Why? Chochmah v'goyim ta'amim. You're supposed to believe the chochmah inside the goyim. So what happens over here? These goyim, the halacha is if a goy does an avera, that's against the seven mitzvot b'nei Noah. The seven laws of Noah. What happens? They're liable to the death penalty immediately. They're chayav mita right away. How do we know that, Rabotai? Last week's parasha. Rebbe, last week you're a Levi, no? This is for you. Last week's parasha. What was last week's parasha? Hashem tells Abraham, I heard the cries of, of Sedom. Also Ishmael, you're right. But it says, I heard the cry. what cries of Sedom? 
What was the cry that they heard? What was the cry? What cry did they hear? Rashi says, they took a girl that gave tzedakah to somebody. They said, in Sedom, we don't give tzedakah. Everybody works for themselves. That was their rule in Sedom. They did that on purpose, by the way. They did that on purpose. Why? When you have a society where, where people get stuff for free, what happens to the society? It breaks down at the end. So they said, in our Sedom, everybody has to work. Nothing doesn't mean to get for free. You know, they say that Mashiach was found where? In Sedom. But really, the people of Sedom had the right mentality. You know, when Mashiach comes, we're going to have that mentality? Can I ask a question? But do, you, but do you understand what I'm saying? When Mashiach comes, that's going to be our mentality. That's called Midat Hadin. So what you say? You found in Sedom or you came out of Sedom? He was found. Matzati Yid David Avdi. Where did he find him? In Sedom he found him. But what happens? Sedom takes this girl who does the tzedakah. They pour honey on her, says the Midrash. And she dies by stinging of the bee. The bees come and they sting her to death. While she's yelling, Hashem says, that's the yelling that I heard. I heard that. So I, the, the question is, how could Hashem judge Sedom right away? Where is the prosecutor? Where is the defendant? I'm sure there was something. No, the Gemara is the, the Torah says, uh, right away he heard the cry. Right away Hashem judged them on the spot. Why is that? Sedom also had the three Avirot, which America is about to get the third one. First, they were all of the Avodah Zarah. We said that right now, everyone, all Crete Max are of the Avodah Zarah. Right? The Rambam says, flat out, whoever believes in JC, he's Oved Avodah Zarah. It's, it's pure idol worship. Okay. When the angels came to Sedom, remember? Then it says that the people of Sedom, first of all, Lot didn't have such a nice wife. Her name was Irit. She didn't want to give any uh, hospitality. So she, she was the one who told everyone, I have guests in my house. So she goes around and says, I need salt, salt. That's why she turned into a pillar of salt. Midah can I get midah? It says, who came to the Lot's house? Minal ve'ad zaken. From the children, from the babies. And what did they say to uh, Lot? Take your guests up, you want to know them. Rashi says, what does that mean, we want to know them? Children, they want to know them, if you know what I'm talking about. So that's the second Avera. Gilu'i Arayot. So they have Avodah Zarah. They have Gilu'i Arayot. But how did Hashem close their deep? Hakta kata shpichud amim. Once they got to the shpichud amim, automatically Hashem closed the gzardim. That's what's happening over here. Rachman al Yitzlan. If you're, if the of a Ben Noah, Sedom is Bnei Noah. They don't need execution or defend. It is that right away they do that. How do we know also? From uh, Shechem. Shechem Ben Chamor. He took Dina by, by force. He was Megale Erva. He, he did adultery at that moment. He's a Chayav Mita. Shimon and Levi, they were Tzadikim, yes or no? Tzadikim? The greatest Tzadik you could ever think of. The Ari, the Rashash, Rabbi Yudaftai, Ben Yishchai, doesn't even reach the, 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 the Glima of Shimon and Levi. You know who Shimon and Levi were? Yab Shiftei. This is the 12th Shvatim, Rabotai. The 12th Shvatim. They can't read. The Ari, Rashash, even more Sherab. This is the Shvatim. They're the fathers of the Ummah. Shimon and Levi. What does Shimon and Levi do? They heard that what happened to Dina. Right away, they take the sword too. One was 13 years old. One was 14 years old. And they wipe out a whole city. Uh, when Yaakov Avinu calls them, what does he tell them? You embarrassed me in front of everyone. What do they tell Yaakov? What do they tell Yaakov? Where is your Torah, Abba? Yeah. They were going over one of the Sheva Mitzvah of B'nai Noach. And we are the keepers of the Torah. We are chayav. We are obligated to take to do to, do the, to be the prosecutors here. We're chayav. What is, does Yaakov you know, answer them back? He never answers them back. He doesn't kick them out of the house. He, they don't lose. Does Levi lose the kiuna? I'm sorry. Does Levi lose the kiuna? He doesn't lose the kiuna. Reuven. What did Reuven do at the end? Reuven switched the beds. And the Torah makes it sound that Reuven did such a big avera, and he lost all three kiuna, bechora, melucha, with teshuva, by the way. He was the first person to shoot, but Levi doesn't lose it. Why? Because those were goyim, those shchem. Once they do the avera, they're right away liable to the death penalty. So it's a sakana. It's a sakana. It's a spiritual sakana and kai. That's why we see what's going on over here: rioting, killing, pillaging. They found a dead body in fresh meadows. In fresh meadows. Jewish? Asian, an Asian woman, young Asian woman, dead. Rabotai. One thing leads to another. One thing you should know, it's a sakana, it's a, it's a spiritual sakana. Now, we have to be honest with ourselves. 
every galut that the Jewish people were in, one day comes to an end. Every galut has an expiration date. And this galut also has an expiration date. But what's interesting, you're, we are all living in a very historic time. Why are we living in a historic time? Simple, very simple. We never had in Jewish history, in Jewish history, where the Jews enjoyed freedom in the Galut, and they enjoyed freedom inside their own country. We never had that in Jewish history. And what happens, instead of us taking that freedom, are we becoming closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu or farther? Statis statistics show that one, between one to two and every three Jewish children are moving away from Yiddishkeit. And we're fighting tooth and nail to keep that one to two inside Yiddishkeit. It's, that's, that's the statistics of today. It's the statistics of today. And not only that, the rabbis right now, they're dying right and left. Just yesterday, not yesterday, on Friday, Rav David Feinstein, the Posek Ador of America, the son of Moshe Feinstein, passes away. The Gemara says, don't think, oh, he was 91 years old. Mm -hmm. ah, it's okay, he lived his life. Rabotei, this, the tzaddikim, they're megen on the door. Without the tzaddikim, in COVID alone, we lost, when, in the first month of COVID, I read you guys the statistics the other time, over 60 rabbanim passed away. Rabbanim! During COVID. Rabbanim, these are people with their Torah, Tamidech HaChamim, Kedushah, Tahara. What did we see going on over here, Rabbi? There's a spiritual battle. Why? There's an expiration date. Soon we're going to read in the Torah the story of Yitzchak and Rivka. It's a very emotional story. Probably the most emotional story in the whole Torah, in my opinion, is the story of Yitzchak and Rivka. Probably the most emotional story. And interestingly, Yitzchak wants to bless Esav. Now, if you see in the Etzachayim of the Ariya Kadosh, if Yitzchak would have blessed Esav Kabbalistically, we would not be sitting here today. There would be no Jews. We would have been long ago lost in the Galut. We would have been finished. Rivka, the smart mother over here, she's the smart one. I mean, Chas Shalom says, compared to Yitzchak Avinu. But in the story, in this, you guys know what I'm saying. She says to Yaakov, you go and go against your own very will. Yaakov had one midah. Titen emet leyaakov. The man was a, uh, was a straight, was he, he could not lie. He couldn't. It was not in his nature. He cannot lie. Even though he had the ability to, like he told Rachel later on, I, I'm, your, I'm your father's brother. So Rashi says, what do you mean you're his father's brother? His, his Lavan's brother. I'm his brother in trickery. He knows how to be a lawyer. I could also be a lawyer too. But I cannot. I'm not a liar. I cannot be a liar. That's why he told Rachel, I'm going to teach you three things. Three signs. You're going to be the one. At the end, she sold him out. And because of that selling out, which she gave it to Leah, we're, I told you guys in the last shiur, we're going to have the Gi'ula Berachamim. Amen. 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 But Yaakov Avinu, he goes, takes the brachot from Esav. When Esav comes back, what happens to Esav? What happens to Esav? We see him try this Rasha, and he was a big Rasha. He caused his parents' demise. Do we see in the Torah that Rivka passed away? No. It's hinted. Anybody know Jewish trivia? Where in the Torah is it hinted that Rivka passed away? Huh? No, it doesn't say Matamot Rivka. It doesn't say Meneke. When Devorah, her Meneke passed. Nice try. You could just put two words, Matamot Rivka, and the Tisami Umi Chalavik. So it says in the Torah, for some reason, it's a Pasuko, eh? Devorah, Devorah, the sister Meneke. The, the, the nursemaid, the, the, the maid, the close confidant of Rivka passes away. So the Rashi asks the question, what is she doing in the Torah? Of what importance is Devorah? The answer is it was really Rivka who passed away that day. But the Torah doesn't say why. It's a shame. It was a shame that Esav was the only one there to bury her. It was a shame for Yaakov that he wasn't there. He was, he was trying to get there. He was on the way. He was there. But Rivka was a smart one over here. She had the power of chesed in her. Like we see in this week's parasha. You know what it is to, to, to give ten camels water? At her age too. Huh? At her age. She was a young girl. And she did it without even thinking twice. What happens? Rivka tells Yaakov, you get the berachot. She saw in Ruach HaKodesh, as we all know, that Yaakov was Adam HaRishon. Esav had, in, had inside of him the Nachash. Nachash HaKadmoni. And Rivka was Chava, the spark of Chava inside of her. They all needed to fix the whole story. Yaakov gets the brachot. Esav comes back in. It's such an emotional uh, sentence over there. He shakes, his body shakes, like he's an epileptic shot. 
And he yells, Vayitzak, Tzaka, and he yells his brain, Zohar Asha. And he cries. And he tells his father, Barcheni, Habracha Achat Avi, do you only have one blessing? It's such an emotional saying. Barcheni Gamani Avi, did you save something for me? And Yitzchak looks at uh, Esav, he says, Ba'achicha b'mirama, your brother came with mirama, v'yikach et birchatecha, and he took your beracha, oh, when he said that sentence, Yitzchak put the stake in Esav's heart, and Esav says that Yaakov, v'yakveni ze pa'amayim, he tricked me twice, et bechorati lakach, he took my bechora, v'ata lakach gam et birchati. So Yitzchak tells Esav, listen, I cannot give you a bracha, but I'll give you something else. I'll give you a bracha in condition. When your brother learns Torah and does mitzvot, you're going to be his servant. <laughs> but if he doesn't do mitzvot, if he doesn't keep the Torah, <laughs> you should take his yoke off your neck. And you're going to be the one in control of him. <laughs> you will live with a sword. The Gemara has a story. Rava had a son, Rava. The great sage Rava, one of the writers of the Gemara, maybe one of the main writers of the Gemara, Abai and Rava, Rava. He had a son. He tells his son, okay, back then what they used to do, they used to get them married, and then they used to send them to learn Torah. Why? It's not the same when you learn Torah when you're married and you learn Torah when you're single. So what he says to, he says to his son, go learn Torah. You're married, go learn Torah. One time. He learned Torah the whole year. It was Erev Yom Kippur. The son said to himself, the said, let me go, let me go and visit my wife. I haven't seen her the whole year. Poor guy. He wanted to see Erev Yom Kippur. Now, why does the Torah make it, why does the Gemara specifically point that it was Erev Yom Kippur? And Yom Kippur, he couldn't be with his wife anyway. He couldn't be with his wife. He specifically picked that day. Rava, his father, he was the Rosh Hashiva that time of Mechoza. He was the Rosh Hashiva. He heard that his son was coming up to see his wife. He said, what? <laughs> you, you, you missed your wife? He took his tummy, he had a big yeshiva, they all went on horses with swords. And they went out to <laughs> greet the son. He says, what? You forgot your dove at home? Go back, get out of here. He says, he says this and get, and they didn't speak to each other. The whole Yom Kippur, father and son were in Jangi. The whole, Rava, he didn't speak to his son. The whole, he didn't ask him for forgiveness. He didn't ask him for forgiveness. The whole Yom Kippur, they couldn't, they couldn't even eat the meal before... Yom Kippur, they were in Jangi. Because what did he say? I just want to see you. You're coming to see, go back home. Go back. What did I say to Yeshiva for? What am I paying your Yeshiva bills for? Get out of here. <laughs> tuition is expensive. <laughs> so he tells him, the Gemara says, why did he come out with a sword to see him? To tell him a lesson. In Shamaim, the book and the sword come wrapped together. It comes wrapped together. Gemara says they come wrapped together. If you keep the book... You don't get the sword. But if you don't keep the book, then you get the sword. That's the secret of the bracha between Isav and Yaakov. But let's look at it in perspective. I once heard from a big Rav. What did Rivka see to take the brachot and give it to Yaakov? Uh, Yaakov? And what did Esav see that Yitzchak see to give the brachot to Esav? We learned last week from Shara Gilgulim that Esav was supposed to be kind. He was kind and he was supposed to help his brother. He was supposed to be the big brain over here. Like we said, the brain of Esav is in the feet of Yaakov. The Gemara, so the, he said, this Rav said, Rivka, when she saw Esav doing what he did, in Ruach HaKodesh, she saw Esav coming into fruition as Europe. As Europe. The Holocaust, the pogroms, the, the deaths of, 60, of Tachvetat, 1648, 1649, the deaths of the Jews, the exiles from Hungary, Vienna, the Spanish Inquisition, all that she saw. She said, this guy... Doesn't get that right. Yitzchak saw something else. Yitzchak saw America. Yitzchak saw America. Harry Truman sending the ships to save the Allied forces. The, he saw the tzedakah, the money giving to the, the Jews. All the help the Jews have. He saw the Jews coming to America and living a life of prosperity. Shoes in every corner. Torah. That's what Yitzchak saw. Yitzchak had a vision. That these two brothers, Yaakov and Esav, are twins. These two twins have to work together. Mm. Cain and Evel didn't work together, but Yitzhak and Esav. Now the truth is, at the end of days, Esav does have to come back and help his brother. He has to help his brother, but the problem is, Esav has a tzad tum'ah inside of him. He has... How is he supposed to help him? In many ways, he's supposed to help him. He's supposed to help him make peace with the Arabs. 
He's supposed to help him. The fact that you see Donald Trump getting up one day, a guy who has millions of dollars, run for presidency out of nowhere and suddenly say, Jerusalem is the capital. He said this a couple of weeks ago. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Do you know what that statement was? You don't know what was going on in Shammai at that moment. At that moment in Shammai, it was like the Samech Mem, who's the angel of Esav, got up on his own two feet, and he was forced to declare, Yerushalayim belongs to Am Yisrael. Hmm. It's something unbelievable. And him moving the embassy, yeah, it's symbolic, but still, it was the Samech Mem himself. He's the Tsar of Esav. He was admitting. Now, you have the other guy. You can't get much more obvious than that. His vice president's name is Amalek. Kamala is the letters Amalek. You don't get more obvious than that. Yeah, Amalek. Amalek. The Amalek. What? Who's Amalek, Rabotai? Who's Amalek? Amalek, Eliphaz, was the eldest son of Esav. Eliphaz was with his father's wife, had a child from her, and then he married her. And out of that came uh, Amalek. I, so I don't even think the word mamzer fits over here. This is like, let's call this a super mamzer. This is like a super mamzer. Uh, this is a different, mutated. it's a mutated mamzer. That's Amalek. Okay? This is what it is. Amalek stands for everything against the Shem. Again, pro Avodazara, pro Gilui Arayot, pro Shfichud Damim, atheism, whatever you want, Amalek is again, whatever you, everything that's, that Amalek wants, Hashem hates. And to the point where Hashem says, I will not be, my name will not be full, it will not be Yud, K, Vav, K completely until Amalek is wiped off the face of the earth. The earth, Rabotai, no more. They're not supposed to exist. Amalek is, a, is Hashem wants it to exist right now for, for reasons that he has. But his name to be fully revealed, Amalek must be wiped out to the point where Shaul... Melech Yisrael, you know who Shaul was? Ben Shana Bemolcho. He was one years old when he was king, says the Tanakh. He was one years old. Ben Shana, he was one. Like Averot. Does a one year old have Averot? No. You better believe it. He doesn't have Averot. One years old. He was one years old when he became king. No Averot. No Averot. He didn't even know who Shmuel Anavi was. You know, when he gave him, when he anointed him, he didn't even know who he was. So the, the, the Gemara said, How come he didn't know who Shmuel Anavi was? He didn't have any need for Anavi in his life. Hmm. He didn't need one. Why? Emuna. Everything was Hashem. Everything was Hashem for him. He doesn't need to ask the Navi anything. He didn't even need to know him. Shaul made one Avera. What's the Avera that he made? What's the Avera that he made? He didn't kill Amalek. He didn't finish Amalek. Why didn't he finish Amalek? Wait. Why didn't he finish Amalek? Because the Jewish people have one problem. Sometimes our mercy is actually our undoing. Sometimes our mercy is actually our own undoing. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu says you have to do A, B, C, you can't say no, let me do C, B, A. Or some people do C, B, D. Yeah. Rabotai, I want to read you, wait, I want to read you something that I think is very no guess to our times. Because let's think about like this. The Gemara says in Masechet Sanhedrin, like what happened in Egypt? Hello. Like those miracles, the way we came out of Egypt, our last exile, our last redemption will be very similar to Egypt. Very similar. So in Egypt, when we were in Mitzrayim, when we came out, how many years we were in Egypt, slaves? 210. 210 years we were in Egypt, right? The world could only be the way it is right now for another... 219 years maximum that's the max it could be why <laughs> so why do i say 219 years because the world could only be six to the year 6000 the gemara says amar of katina of katina says shisha al feshana ve alma 6000 years the world will be if it's going to be 6000 years we're in the year 5781 6,000 minus 5,781, gonna be 219 years. How long were we in Egypt? 210. So, take the 210 out, have about nine years. Now, give this guy a beer, please. So, what happens? What happens? 
Why does Mashiach have to come a little bit before? Think about it rationally. Why did I bring you the whole story of Amalek right now? The first and most important job of Mashiach Tzidkeinu, he must wipe off the face of the earth, Amalek. The coronavirus is doing a very good job in helping Mashiach. Why? The coronavirus has put our world into complete doubt. Everything that we believe that science knows, if one thing came out of this coronavirus that was good, many good things came out, was it put a huge question mark on science. For the first time since science was born, scientists say, we don't know. We don't know. Which is a big punch to their face. Because science, scientific method, which was born from Kritmax, by the way, who were the first scientists? Monks. Mm -hmm. Believers in JC. Gregor Mendel, uh, Isaac Newton, all these people were very big Catholics. Monks, not just Catholics, monks. Isaac Newton was not Jewish. No, he believed, he, they say he learned here and there, whatever the case is. So, what happens? The biggest atheistic the biggest atheists come from where science universities breed the biggest atheists why i don't need to know who made the world i could explain the world the world was made 30 billion years ago there was a bang and a shebang and a shaboom the lights went on and off and suddenly we have this amazing program beings we could explain it the tsunami that happened a couple of years ago there was an underworld underground the science puts our lives, why do rabbis do not, they don't push the le learning of science? The same reason why the Rashba was against learning philosophy. But what's the point of philosophy and science? To make you not believe in God. That you could explain everything in a rational way. Everything is rational. They don't explain why it happened. They explain, but it's, it's possible. I could explain the mechanism behind it. Evolution. What's evolution? The, the things mutated and it became Darwin. Darwin, all these things. It, the biggest anti-Hashem, anti-Judaism, anti-God. What did Hashem do? He sent a small bug. He sent a small virus. What's a virus? It's a dead thing. It's not even alive. You know that? It doesn't have a... It's not a, a virus. That's why it needs, it's a, it needs to be inside a host. If it's not in a host, it's dead. It's not even alive. The virus is exactly the Samech Mem. The Kabbalah explains, the Ari explains. What's the Samech Mem? Samech Mem himself is dead. He feeds off of us. We're his host. If we do mitzvot, we're killing him. That's why he fights so much that we should do what? Averot. So what's a virus? It's a samech mem. Hashem sends this virus, and what does he do? He goes to the science, and he says, boom in your face. We believed in science. Now we don't really believe in it so much. Who's right? Who's wrong? We don't know. They can't even figure out one small virus. China had it. Now China doesn't. This one had it. Now they don't. Do people get it again? Do masks work? Do six feet work? Does it now work? How come he gets sick and he doesn't get sick? How come children don't get it? They still can't explain that. How come children don't get the virus? How come they say wear a mask, but we know that the masks have holes in it. They have pores. And this thing is 100,000 smaller than the pores inside the mask. So what's the point of wearing a mask? Well, so, but they see it works. So what's going on here? We don't know. When science says it doesn't know, it's basically saying that we mean nothing. It's a bunch of baloney. It's a bunch of baloney. Why is it baloney? It's all hypotheses. Trial and error. Let me try to see if it works. I'll kill you. But at least I tried it. Yeah. it kill, it'll kill you, but at least I'll try it. In the beginning of the virus, how people were dying? Panic, 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 panic. The panic killed. Panic. No, it didn't. No, it wasn't the one they killed. Steve, people are still, how come they're not dying right now? Big suffix, suffix. The suffix now is on the suffix. So where are people are running to right now? They're running to Hashem. So there is somebody who runs the world. We believed in politics. We believed in the people uh, that were heads of the countries. Who are they right now? They get a coronavirus. Oh, they're human. They have to go to be dude. They have to go two weeks inside. Oh, they're also human. Oh, he was. We all thought he was gonna win, and suddenly, boom, he didn't. Hashem is switching the whole world because he's trying to say hello. I'm taking off my mask. Why am I giving you guys a mask? Because I'm taking off mine. The world was in hester panim for the last 1,956 years. We were in Galut. Hashem saying, I'm starting to take off the mask. But I'm not going to do it so fast. Because if I do it fast, like in Har Sinai, you guys are going to die. <laughs> if it's going to happen quickly, your neshamut are going to come out. It's like a father didn't see his son after being 20 years in jail. He sees his dad right away. Boom, his neshama comes out from the happiness. Like what happened to Yaakov. Sarah came and she started to sing, Yosef's alive. Why did she do that? So the shock won't kill the old man. 
So Hashem is saying, I'm, I'm coming back. Your expiration date is coming back, coming through. The galut is coming to an end. But I'm doing it slowly. To do it slowly, I have to bring my realization to the world. First, I have to kill Amalek. Hmm. Amalek says, I don't exist. I'm going to show them that they don't exist. But the only question is, are you going to open your eyes and see it? Or are we going to live all our lives thinking about what's going to be tomorrow? But look at what's happening right now. Look how much time Hashem gave us. We were seven months from, Jan from March until August. We were all at home. Nobody was working. We used to go. Remember we were going outside? It was empty outside. Yeah. The city is still like that. What happened, Rabotai? What, did we use that time rationally? Did we, did we use it wisely? Did we use it to learn? Did we use it to open our minds to Hashem? Or is it going to take another seven months? Hashem can't take off the mask right away. If he does, it's not good news. Guys, remember, Mashiach coming is not going to be some miraculous thing. When Moshe Rabbeinu came, he was a guy who came, and he said, guys, I came to take you out. They, did, they believed him. You know what it means they believed him? They believed him, okay. Said that you came there, let's see, let's see what you're going to do now. What are you going to do? Why did Hashem fight Pharaoh? Why did Hashem do that? Because if the Jews would have just ran out of Egypt with Moshe, he could have done that. They would have said, oh... It's so there's two gods. Just one of them has to run away from the other one. Hashem said, no, I'm going to fight Pharaoh. I'm going to show the world that Pharaoh doesn't exist. That's why before Mashiach comes, the biggest Avodah Zarah of the world, that's our beliefs, have to come crashing down. Our politicians have to come crashing down. I don't feel bad for Trump. I don't feel bad for him. He has to come crashing down. The other party also has to come crashing down. That's why there's only one god. Nobody's the ruler of the world. There's only one ruler. Now, what's the difference? We think he's a ruler. And that's it. He's a ruler that runs the world. He's not just a king who sits on his throne. He sits on his throne and he runs the world too. And that's what we're missing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is here and he wants to come back home. What do we say in Slichot? Hashem, Asel Leman? Shemach, do it for you. Don't do it for us. Do it for you. Hashem also wants to come home. For 1,956 years, he wasn't home. He also wants to come home. But he loves us. He wants to take us with him. Are we going to cling to our beliefs or not? I want to read you a, a chapter in Daniel. The book Daniel is one of the strongest books. Half of it is in Aramaic. Half of it is in Hebrew. And I want to read something scary. What's going to be at the end? Something a bit scary in the book of Daniel. And I, I suggest everyone over here, when they have free time, to open up the book of Daniel, learn chapter 12. And it will be in that time, at the end. Ya'amod Michael, 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 the great angel, archangel, the prince of the Jews. He's the representative of the Jews. He will stand up for Am Yisrael. Ha'omed al b'nei amecha, he's our representative in Shamaim. Ve'hayta et Sarah, it will be a time of great Sarah. Great panic. Like it wasn't from the time when we were a nation until then. Rashi says, why is Michael standing as if he's doing nothing? Rashi says, Yishtatek, Michael will shut his mouth. Why? He will see Hashem sitting in the throne of judgment. And he's thinking to, he's deliberating Hashem. How will I save the Jews and get rid of their oppressors? Their oppressors are a great nation. Is it worth it for me to get rid of this great nation just for this small population over here? Michael will get so scared, says Rashi. He won't be able to say anything. Yishtatek. Ve'hayta et sarah. Be'pamalia shel mala. Where will there be et sarah? Not down here, Rashi says. Lemala over there. We don't know what's going on in Shamaim. And where will the category be? Where will all the prosecution be, Abraham? Betalmidei Chachamim. Betalmidei Chachamim. Abotai, a lot of Talmidei Chachamim are passing away lately. A lot are passing away. Big category on Talmidei Chachamim. Ve'yimalet amecha. But the Jewish people will be saved. Only which ones? Kol hanimtza katuv basefer. The ones that are written in the book. There is a book in Shamaim, like it says by Achashverosh. He opened up Sefer Azichronot, the book of remembrance. This book is mentioned three times in the Torah. One of them is in the last prophet Malachi, where Malachi talks about Gog Magog. 
Only the ones that are written in the book will be saved. Who, who could be written inside this book? I'm not going to talk about that right now. It has to do a lot with your midot, with a person's characteristics. That's why when we learn Sha'arei Kedusha, what does it say in Sha'arei Kedusha? First thing it talks about over there is a person's midot. Stiff-necked. What is, how are we compared to a nation that is stiff-necked? God you have to know how to break that stiff neckness. Even when you're right. And it will be on that time. Many will rise up from the dead. Those that will be saved for the future. And those that will go back to the death. Their, their souls will be wiped out for eternity. Mm. And here is the famous sentence that Bukharians like to read in the Yushuvot. Those that will cling, Rashi says, and Maskilim, Sheasku Torah. That learned Torah. The Torah was their, their bread and butter. The Torah was their main focus in life. The Asku Bemitzvot. And they did mitzvot. Yes, hiru kezohar araki will shine like the stars in the sky. Ve'ata Daniel, he says, you Daniel, stoma dvarim. I'm gonna give you a date, Daniel. Tells Daniel, I'm giving you a date. Ve'chatom basefer, I won't give you the keys to unlock the date. Ad et ketz. Until the end, Rashi says people will figure out the date. Rashi says. Yeshotetu Rabim. Many will try to figure out this date in Daniel. Vetirbeadat. Many oibrechachams. They say in Yiddish. Many chachamim will come and try to figure out the date. Veraiti ani Daniel and I, Daniel saying I saw there were three angels standing on top of the river, and I asked the man wearing white linen clothes as Gabriel, Ad matai ketz plaot. Give me a date. Remember, Daniel is writing this right before the Jews go back to build the second temple. That's over 2,500 years ago. And I heard Gabriel say to me, he raised both his hands to Shamaim, mm-hmm. and he swore in the name of the one that's the life of the world. It's Hashem. In a time, Umo'adim in two times, Vachetzi in half a time. Go figure that out. Go figure that out. When the Jewish people will lose all hope, all this will come to fruition. Daniel says, I heard it, I don't understand what he's saying. What's this, half a time? Time? Two times? Half a time. And I asked Gabriel, What's this end date? I don't get what you're saying over here. Help a brother out. <laughs> Vayomer, and he says, Lech Daniel. No. Go, Daniel. No. Because they are closed and hidden. Hadivarim ad etkets until the end of times. Many people will, will spend their time trying to crack the code. They're going to do Torah codes. Vihirshiu Rishaim. And they're going to give dates and they're going to get it wrong. Remember we gave a shiur? All the dates that they gave, they're going to get it wrong, says Gabriel. Velo yavinu kol rishayim, and the rishayim will not know. Va'amaskilim yavinu. But at the end, says Rashi, there will be the ones who will crack the code towards the end. And now, Gabriel gives Daniel a hint. Ume'et husara tamid, when the work in the Beit HaMikdash will cease to happen, and when they will put in Abu Dazara on the Temple Mount, 1,290 years. Ashreya Mechake, blessed is the one that will wait. For 1,335 years. That's another 45 years plus 1290. And you, Daniel, Lech Laketz. Go to the end of time. V'tanuach. Take a rest. Take a, take a nap. V'ta'amod legoralcha leketzi amin. And I'm telling you, says Gabriel, you will wake up in Tchiat HaMetim. 
So many Chachamim try to make this calculation. Look at this Rashi over here, this huge Rashi. He tries to make a huge calculation. When do we count the 12th? He says, when do we count? 1290 from the time they put in Abu Dazara on the Temple Mount. Many people try to make this calculation. So first of all, what does this word in Daniel mean? Daniel says 1290 years, but blessed is the one that waits another 45 years. What's supposed to happen during those 45 years? Rashi explains, we have a Kabbalah. Rebbe to student, Rebbe to student. Mashiach will be revealed. And then at the end of 1290 years, from this time when they will put an Abu Dazara on the Temple Mount, on the Harabai, and then he will die or disappear, and then he will be re-revealed no, no. after another 45 years. That's after 1335 years. So, I heard a shot. I want to share this shot with you. Once again, I'm not prophesizing or giving you an uh, exact date. Oh, now we're talking business. But I heard something that makes a lot of sense. Many rabbis, they calculated the 1290 years from the time they put Abu, where the Emperor Adrian put the Abu Dazara on the Temple Mount. If you would calculate that date from that time, it equals to somewhere to the Spanish Inquisition. Spanish Inquisition. And we all know that the Spanish Inquisition, <coughs> after the Spanish Inquisition, two people were born that they enlightened all of Am Yisrael. One was Rav Yosef Karo, Bala Shulchan Aruch, which thinks to him we're alive today and able to learn halacha. And the second one is, huh? Arya Kadosh, thank you very much. If it wasn't for him, he wouldn't even be sitting over here. So the two of them were born, and we also know from Sefer Achez Yonah that the Ari was Mashiach Ben Yosef. When he went to the grave of Shmaya Aftalion, he told his students, pray that Mashiach Ben Yosef should not die. Or Chaim Mital says, we were stupid. We didn't know he was talking about himself. Hmm. But there is another time to calculate it, which no other rabbi has calculated from that time. From the time that the Sultan Omar put the Al-Aqsa Mosque right where the Kodesh Kodashim is. <clears throat> if you're going to count from there, that was made in the year 692, Common Era. If you're going to count from there, 1290 years, you're going to get exactly the year 1982. Tafshin Membet. And interestingly, it was exactly that time that the Labavitch Rebbe, blessed be his name, Zichron Olivracha, he started to talk about his Mashiach campaign. And he quoted in his Sichot, it's written down and it's quoted on video, that he started to say, guys, get ready. And he never gave a source. Many people say that he was counting the 1290 years from the Al Aqsa Mosque. You know, there's two mosques over there there's the Golden Dome. There's, then there's the other smaller dome over there, uh, over there. Those two domes correspond to Abu Dazaraz. <clears throat> two Abu Dazaraz, the sun and the moon. That's why they specifically made one yellow and one dark for the sun and the moon. Two Abu Dazaraz. And if you're going to count 45 years after 12, uh, 1982, what do you get? The year 2027. So we see that history, in the year 1989, communism fell. Twin Towers, America had a weakness. We saw that uh, they made a weakness. War between Islam and the West. Wars between Israel, Iran. Iran wants to make a nuclear weapon and they want to basically just drop Amen. one bomb and wipe Chas Shalom Am Yisrael. So we see history is on what we call, Trump calls it, Operation Warp Speed. This history is on a path of no return. We are flying through history right now. Arabs are making peace with Jews. Uh, Israel is doing cyber war with Iran blowing up things over there. An election that is bringing America to its knees. America is 50-50. It's never been like that before. R literally 50-50. And it could be, could be that it's very possible that the expiration date of this Galut is coming to a very big close. Because we know from the book of Yechezkel, which we're going to learn next week, Bezrat Hashem, when he talks about Gogo Magog, we're going to read it inside. That there's supposed to be a big magifa. It's supposed to be a big pandemic. We don't know if it's Corona or not. But there's supposed to be a pandemic in the world. And Gog, and Gog is supposed to come to Am Yisrael. We don't know how he's going to come. 
And we don't know if it's going to happen before Mashiach is revealing himself or after Mashiach is going to reveal himself. But I will tell you one thing, and this is the scariest part. There is a Zohar HaKadosh. A very scary Zohar. The Zohar says before Mashiach will be revealed or after he will be revealed. Just like we had a plague of darkness in Mitzrayim where 80% of the Jews never got up. It's supposed to be a rewind of history. And there will be another time where it's going to be another situation of darkness. And chas shalom, like Daniel says, there were people that will go to the Dira'on Olam. They will not merit to see the redemption. And we have to take the words of Daniel very closely. Hamaskilim yaziru kezohar akia. It's not just a word, a sentence we say in a yushvo. Hamaskilim yaziru kezohar akia. Torah has to be our main focus in life. You have to catch the Torah like it's nothing else. There's nothing else. It takes oxygen. Every open moment, every free moment, just learn Torah. And I want to read you something from the Rabbi Udaftaye, because you know we can't have a shiur without Rabbi Udaftaye. In the name of the great Mekubal, Rabbi Shalom Buz, uh, Buz, uh, Buzaglo, the Baal Kisel Melech, in the name of Rabbi Avraham Munsa and Rabbi Chaim Pinto. Big Mekubali. He says over here, Upiresh. Amar Eliyahu le Rabbi Shimon b'tikuna shetita'a. Eliyahu Anavi told Rabbi Shimon bar. Yochai, thank you. The Behai Sefer Azor. With this book of Sefer Azor, yit parkun min galuta. The Jews will leave this galut berachamei with mercy. Ve'it galia. And when will it be revealed? Dafka. Dafka means what? Specifically, Bedara Batra'a, at the end. That's when this Limud is going to be spread. Ki Limud Hazor Begirsa, says Rabbi Udaftaye, in the name of the Kisei HaMelech, Be'alma, even if you just read the Zohar, what's Be'alma mean? Like you're reading it, just uh, read it. Bone Olamot, creates worlds. Kol Sheken, even more so, im yiskel yilmod velavim pirush ma'amar echad. If you have the zechut of understanding even one ma'amar, look at his words. This sentence has to give you a, a shock. Yaaseh tikun b'sha'a echad, by learning only one hour of the Zohar, you will make a tikun. Ma shelo yaaseh belimud apshat shana t'mima. What you could learn, regular gemara, mishnayot, humash, in one year. Does not equal one hour of learning the Zohar and the secrets of the Torah. So if we want, now we understand how come the limud of the Zohar Kadosh and the secrets of the Torah is so is so powerful and it brings the Geula faster. Why? We need to fix all the nitzotzot. And there's only one way to do it: learning the secrets of the Torah. Also, you got to learn the Gemara, Mishnah, but you have to give some time. You must. I don't want to tell you what the other things he wrote over here. He says over here, it's mutav, it's good to be born as an ama'aret. If you're going to be a, if you're going to be a Talmud Chacham that doesn't learn the secrets of the Torah. It's worth it better that you should have been born in ama'aret. I wanted to read you a Tana de a fascinating Tana de but we don't have time. I'm going to let you guys go right now. May Kadosh Baruch Hu bless you. May our Limut Torah be the Nishmat Ezra Kohen Kola Ben Rachel. And may all the sponsors have a lot of bracha v'atzlacha. May we all be zochet to work on our midot. And be a maskilin yazir kezoa rakia. To be medabeg v'torat emet. And may we be zochet lekola bracha v'atzlacha. Ge'ula berachamim. Amen. Amen.